Today I've got quite the list of things that I need to do in a very short amount of time. I've got to do the final stages of making the tiny house watertight and then I need to move all of that marine grade plywood into the tiny house because we are due to have so much rain and even though I've got a tarpaulin covering it, water always manages to find a way onto it and even though it is water resistant, I still don't really want it standing in water so I'm going to move it all into the tiny house and also I am so bored of tripping all over the place so enough's enough, I'm going to try and put some of them down. The only issue I have is I've damaged the circular saw so it doesn't cut in a straight line. The actual guide marking that you would follow the line Line, that seems to have twisted a bit so I'm finding it more difficult than normal to cut a straight line so I've got an idea to compensate that. Right now the important thing is masticking the surrounds of the skylights. The reason you do this is water will find its way running down the sides of the outstand and at the moment there is an opening between the flashing and the glass. Now obviously the skylights have got a layer of silicon going around the flat part of the outstand but it's not really good enough. You need to do this final stage of masticking kind of again around the outside. Another thing that I need to do is if you remember the first skylight window that I made the flashing tape went really badly because it was minus two and I didn't know what I was doing I didn't understand that you have to really heat up flashing tape to make it properly stick to the outstand now on this one as well I said that I would just redo it in the future but I can't really be bothered to do that so I'm just going to try and fix it as best as I can now you might be thinking Chris why is there just a skylight lent up against the house next to it did you order too many that does sound like something I would do but that was the skylight that arrived damaged. So I took that out, put the new one in, and this is its resting place. I cannot be bothered to move any more skylights. I'm done. This tiny house has got six two meter 20 by 60 centimeter skylights. And I don't know how I managed to do this, but I bought double glazed skylights for the roof and then triple glazed ones for the walls. I honestly thought that the skylights going on the walls were double glazed, but I must have accidentally selected the wrong ones. So that does kind of explain why they are so heavy. Triple glazed is better than double glazed double glaze will do the job single glaze is where you really notice the temperature go in your house because they're so bad because that is one of the main places for heat loss is through your window if you're thinking about buying single glazed just don't and if you don't know what that really means it just means on triple glazed there is three layers of glass with two air gaps and that forms a triple glazed window in comparison to double glaze there's only two pieces of glass and an air gap and then i think they fill the air gap with a particular gas which is something to do with heat transfer and science but as i've said many times i redid physics a level three times and i went from a u redid it again got a u redid it again and got an e so i think you should probably not listen to me on that front now when it comes to laying the floor i am now going to install some of the half boards the reason you do this is i don't actually really know it's just what you do you stagger floorboards you've got to put screws into the joist every 40 centimeters i'd say there's definitely no harm doing more but having too little will definitely cause an issue because the floor will start to move all over the place so you want to make sure that it's got a properly good fixing and always remember to make sure the boards land 50 50 on a joist that is basically it when it comes to laying down these floorboards now as i said the circular saw is a little bit out so what i'm going to do is kind of build a template for the guide of the saw to kind of run along and therefore it ensures it's a straight line now don't really need to be too perfect because this is the subfloor there's going to be a layer of insulation on top of it and then on top of that i'm going to do tng which is tongue and groove wood chip flooring that's a bit of a weird floor detail but it is what i've decided to go with I've seen some people say, Chris, do you ever not have AirPods in? And the honest answer is no, it's so good because you can carry on working if you're on the phone. Voice isolation, which a lot of people don't know, you can change the setting on your iPhone so that it basically cuts out all the background noise. And I literally use a circular saw on legit calls where I definitely should be concentrating. And everyone is none the wiser because it cuts the noise out perfectly. Some work during a project is really enjoyable, but a lot of it is quite monotonous. I think that's the word where you just do the same thing over and over again and therefore if you're listening to a podcast that's either funny or interesting it makes the process a little bit more enjoyable like the other night when I was working from 10 until 4 in the morning I listened to like a four and a half hour podcast in one go and then listen to music when I get really tired
little bit of a shorter video today because I was only at the tiny house for a couple hours so if you enjoyed it please give it a like subscribe if you're new and I've put a link in the description for my weekly newsletter if you haven't already sign up you will not regret it trust and as always I will see you tomorrow in a bit